It's winter here in Pennsylvania now, and we just had a snowstorm a few days ago. Which reminds me of a story that I always wanted to share. When the White Star Line's Germanic sank in New York City. Now, some of you are already familiar with this story, but I'm sure others of you are wondering how that's so, because the Germanic went on for a very long and illustrious career. Well, let me explain. Winter in the North Atlantic is always a challenge for the crew of any liner, but the one of 1899 was particularly harsh. A fierce winter storm rolled in in early February, as the White Star Liner Germanic was nearing the end of a westbound voyage and approaching New York. As high seas crashed over the deck, the frigid low temperatures froze the water almost instantly. Ice was accumulating all along her decks, up her masts, on her spars, and in her rigging. Now when ice accumulates high up on a ship, sailors are usually kept on top of this, chipping it off so the ship doesn't become too top heavy. But there was a very strong wind coming in from the west, which prevented any sailor from safely going up out on deck. In fact, the wind blowing in from the west, which was blowing against them, added two full days to her crossing, and made it exceptionally difficult to navigate from the bridge. It was reported that the Germanic had accumulated more ice than any other vessel in the Atlantic up to that time, perhaps up to 1,800 tons. The ship developed a starboard list as she was now becoming extremely top-heavy. The ship limped into New York Harbor with passengers in a near panic. Now, New York Harbor was already being pummeled by this storm, with many ships breaking free from their moorings and harbor tugs being unable to assist them due to ice flows. It was a miracle, and a testament to her crew, that the Germanic was able to make it to the White Star Pier 45 on February 11th. Her passengers were safely disembarked, although it was said that enormous icicles hung over their heads from the spar deck as they did so. Her cargo was unloaded, and this left the ship even more top-heavy than before. Now, sailors were attempting to clear the decks and the rigging of ice, but the winds were picking up once again. The ship was scheduled to depart New York on an outbound voyage on February 15th, and it was now February 13th. Her coal ports were opened as they began coaling her, and new cargo was brought on board. But towards evening, a strong gale started to pick up again, and the ice still had not been cleared from her. The wind blew her onto an 8 degree starboard list, and her open coal ports went under. Now, Captain McKinstry did everything he possibly could to bring on some more of that new cargo to add ballast to the lower parts of the ships, but it was in vain. They also tried closing the coal ports, but the ice had caked so thick that the doors simply couldn't be closed at this point. And so, the Germanic sank at her mooring. Now, it was believed that it would be a fairly quick process to get rid of the ice, close the ports, and pump her dry, but it wasn't until two days after trying this that they realized there was a porthole that was left open below the waterline, and as they pumped the water out, water was flowing back in at basically the same rate. By this time, the ship had sank an additional 13 feet as she settled into the mud, and now at high tide, her stern was completely submerged and the water was up to her bridge. The ship of course missed its February 15th departure, and passengers intended for the Germanic were transferred to the White Star Liner Kimrick. Companies who were shipping cargo aboard the Germanic and had it loaded on prior to its sinking and then destroyed when she went down actually ended up suing the White Star Line, a case which was brought to the Supreme Court, but that was a little bit later. A week had come and gone since her sinking and she'd settled 18 feet into the mud. As she sank further and further, divers needed to plug more and more holes in her in order to aid the pumps, such as her upper vents. It wasn't until February 22nd that the unceasing efforts of the Merritt and Chapman Derrick and Wrecking Company and the Baxter Wrecking Company paid off and the bow began to pop up out of the water. Spectators on the street cheered as the name Germanic on her hull popped above the waterline, but the stern stayed flooded and the buoyant bow actually drove the stern deeper into the mud. The stern was released two days later and the remaining water was pumped out. Wreckers boarded her to inspect and survey her interiors and found that she was actually still in pretty good shape. She didn't even seem to be dirty inside, simply wet. Nonetheless, she was to be sent back to Harlan and Wolf in Belfast for a complete overhaul, arriving first in Queenstown on March 16th, where she was met by White Star Line Company officials, including soon-to-be Chairman J. Bruce Ismay, who sailed aboard the almost certainly damp and musty Germanic back to Belfast. 
The Germanic was fixed up as good as new and back in service within three months. It's been speculated that her sinking at her pier and the subsequent costly renovation made to her is why the ship continued service for so much longer after that. The Germanic was already nearly an antique but went on in service for nearly 40 more years and then an additional 13 years as a warehouse and a hotel before finally being scrapped around 1950, having been one of the longest serving ocean liners in history. I'd like to thank the Titanic International Society and Mike Poirier, and in particular Charles Haas and his book Falling Star which he co-wrote with Jack Eaton. It was through them and their book that I was able to use such photographs, and I wanted to especially thank them for their permission in using their material. If you haven't already seen their work, please do check out the Titanic International Society at the link in the description below. 